How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Jacked Up Fishing. Well today's episode, we're going to hang an outboard on a boat. I'm going to show you how to do it right and the correct way so you don't have any problems later. Stick around. So we picked up this motor last year, got it at an auction, it's a brand new 2020 Mercury 154 stroke. We're unboxing it and pulling it out of the crate and uh, getting it up on the cherry picker so we can put it up onto the boat. It's a really beautiful engine, I can't wait to mount it. Alright, so we got it hanging from the cherry picker, it's pushed up to the back of the boat and we just got to make sure that the cavitation plate, just see where it's at in reference to the bottom of the boat. And that's the only thing you really got to worry about. Make sure that that's level at the bottom of the boat. So we've got the two top bolts in. We think it's the right height, but we're going to tighten it down and then go back and check and make sure it's the right height on the boat. So while we're tightening it down, we notice that the bolts aren't quite long enough. It doesn't get into the nylock. So we decided just to put the top two bolts in and grab some longer ones. All right, so we got the first top two bolts in there right now. We're going to go ahead and check the level. You want to be exactly level, that cavitation plate, or a little below. A little too high and you won't have any trim. So, let's go ahead and give it a check real quick. And there it is. Perfectly level. Touching the skeg. And we're going to give that a shot. If we have to, we can bring it down one more bolt. But it gets better efficiency as well. You want it to be on this sharp point. Any lower and it starts going on this round point. But the sharp point where you want to be. All right, so we're back at the house here. We had to come back to the shop. I mounted it over my friend's house. That's where the motor was. We put the cherry picker on there. And if you notice, the bolts weren't quite long enough. So we just put them on the top two bolts just to get it here. I went and got today, got some six inch bolts, a little bit longer, that way we get into the nylock. And I'm gonna show you how I bed the, the bolts. Also screw them down and don't over press, don't over torque them. If you got just a regular, big flat washer like this and you're bolting it on the transom that's why i had to put this transom saver on here somebody had impacted it with an air impact and it actually broke the fiberglass this was sucked into the fiberglass and uh it caused the damage it caused it to crack over time so now i put the transom saver on there i have a transom plate as you can see it goes all the way across without just that and uh you can torque it pretty tight with a transom saver on there that's the main thing is not to have just a little surface area that increases the surface area so you can really torque it down no need to crank it down like he-man or nothing just give it a little bit make it tight and the sealant will do the rest another thing is a lot of sealant this is the one time that i suggest you use 5200 3m 5200 this is what i'm using 3m 5200 and it, this is this is the most nasty stuff known to man. You get it on you, it spreads everywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna put the bottom bolts in first, get them ready to go, tighten them down, and then I'm gonna replace these two top bolts as well. Let's get, let's get to it. So also to recap what I did earlier, when we mounted the motor, this is the cavitation plate right here. There's also like a semi cavitation plate, but this is the actual cavitation plate. It's the one directly over the prop. And this is, this should be, directly level with the bottom of the boat or just a smidge taller. You don't want it lower because then the lower unit is pointy in the front right here. Any any higher than that and it gets it gets rounded, puts off a big spray. And you'll know you're too low if you're riding and it puts out too much spray. You'll know you're too high if you don't have any trim. If you just touch your trim and it starts porpoising, that's how you know your motor's too high. You can go down a little bit. We're gonna test it where it is right now. It's just above the bottom of the boat so we're gonna give it a shot so here's the transom saver and it, what it is is a big washer it's it's actually measured perfectly between the two uh, bolts on the bottom this is the bottom one that goes on the bottom bolts and this is one I'm gonna start putting on I'm just gonna put my bolts through it and put a little bit of sealing on it on the back side so it kind of jams inside in the hole here so this is what I'm doing right here I'm just putting these bolts in I'll put some sealing on the back side and then I'll put them through the holes into the back of the engine. There you go, right there. That's all you're going to need as far as 5200 goes. If you get it on you, oh, it spreads. So make sure you get it off right away.
and I'll clean it all up, but I like to be pretty thorough with it here. And I put the washer on. When the bolt spins, it's gonna get it all in there. I'm gonna push it back and forth like this. Nice and tight. Now I'm gonna clean all this cock up. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting tape. I filled up the gap in there below the bolt and I put tape here because 5200 or any cock likes to sag over time. So this keeps it from sagging and then I, it won't all fall out and get all messy. So I'll tape it up there, make sure it's all clean, put the tape on there and then come back the next day and pull the tape. Once you think it's all sealed and everything, go back with some denatured alcohol, even some acetone. A little bit of acetone will work good. Um, just clean all the caulk up, make sure it looks good, and uh, make sure it stays. That's the main thing. But just clean everything up, make sure it looks good, to look, get a good uh, looking product when you're done. But it's nice and sealed. That's the key. That's all right, though. You know what, dude? It's all mounted up, ready to rock. I put the blue tape there just so in case the 5200 wants to sag, it doesn't drip anywhere overnight. It'll dry tomorrow, I'll pull that off. It looks good, looks good. Brand new 150 out of the crate and mounted up. All right, next let's get to rigging. So this boat already had holes in it. It was already centered. I double checked the centering of the motor by doing a cross uh, pattern. I'm gonna show you how I measure. You measure from one chine to the another on the other chine and then cross them up see from from the top chine down to the bottom chine same thing on both sides wherever they cross is where you're going to have the center line of your whole boat i'm going to show you that diagram right now i'm going to put it up right here for you so you can see it check it out that's what i'm talking about you want to make sure the motor is directly in the center if you already got holes don't worry about it but if you're building a new boat or restoring a boat and you redid the transom this is what you would do measure it just like this all right all right hold up hold up so on the bottom bolts i use the stock bolts it came with a brass nut a brass nylon nut um a brass nylon lock nut it doesn't have the characteristics of stainless stainless if you have a stainless nut and a stainless bolt and you torque, torque them too tight without any lubrication they'll gall up with, and lock up so that's why i have this grease right now as you can see and i put it on there and then that's how we run it on there if you try if they'll lock up and there's no getting them undone you, it will not unloosen it will not loosen up it will not tighten up it won't move it's like welded together and that's what the galling up with stainless is so be careful when you do that don't use impact wrenches and send it home because it'll lock it up quick Especially if you don't, I usually just put grease on the threads or a little bit of uh, never seize on the threads and it won't do that. And there you have it. That's how you mount an outboard. Brand new, straight onto the boat. You want to make sure that cavitation plate is level with the bottom of the boat. That's the main thing. If just a little high might be okay or a little low might be okay, but that's the general principle. There might, there is a lot of adjustment there. I think it's two inches either way. So give it a shot, mount it to the bottom of the boat. Like I said, also 5200 this is the one application where you do use 5200 through the transom you want to seal it and be generous with it wipe it all off clean it up it cleans up with acetone or alcohol uh, denatured alcohol works good as well but you want to get that nice and bedded in there get the bolts bedded in nice bead of 5200 in between the bolt holes everything like that and don't use the washer just the round washers that's the most important thing that's what i had to fix on this boat somebody used the round washers they tightened it down with an impact wrench and completely sucked it in and cracked the the gel coat into the fiberglass and just started making from then on it started you know wearing it out wallering the hole also started cracking around the transom like you see in the beginning of the video you seen that crack along the transom that's what it's from from over tightening it i see it all the time we always use them transom plates now for the two holes. It's a big, it uh, um, distributes the, the weight of the motor and tightening the bolts, but you still don't have to tighten them down that tight. Hope you like this video on how to mount an outboard. If you have any suggestions or uh, anything that I missed, leave a comment below, let me know. All right, that's all I got for you. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe, jacked up out.